So I'm going to talk about what is WebAssembly very briefly and how to use it in your JavaScript projects. I mean, easily. So first, um, Jara introduced me pretty well. But hi, I'm Sven. I'm one of the core maintainers of Babel. I also have a ton of stickers if you want some. Um, I'm participating in TD39 and Webpack and in Node.js. Um, so feel free to reach me out on Twitter if you have any question on all that stuff. Cool. So I would like to start with a quote, which is that the web is already the biggest platform because you basically have the web everywhere, right? And languages that aren't able to target the web yet will be able to do so using WebAssembly. So basically, we will expand it, the web platform to the rest of the world. This is the real goal of WebAssembly. But you may be asking uh, if there is an issue with JavaScript. Uh, actually, not really. But the point is that you have some languages that are not able to target the web, which are targeting JavaScript. Because, well, you have no choice. It's basically the way you run code in the browser. And the thing is that uh, JavaScript isn't a good compilation target. It's like super dynamic, untyped, and it's ne it has never been designed for that. Um, so WebAssembly is going to fix that. And uh, maybe you know it. Uh, we have ISM.js, which is the current experimentation. Um, but yeah, WebAssembly is going to replace that, basically. WebAssembly is, is known to be deterministic and easy to reason about, which means that when you look at a piece of code of WebAssembly, you are able to tell the output of this program, where in JavaScript and civil addition can trigger many side effects. So it's not really possible to uh, infer the output. Um, it's also designed to be safe to execute, and which means that, I mean, in fact, your memory space, the execution stack, and the browser's internal are completely separated. You have no way to jump between them, which means that you can also not be, uh, perform undefined behaviors like you could find in C++. So it, like, a key selling point of WebAssembly is it's safe. It's also really fast. Um, it's actually compiled to native code directly, and it will be jitted in the future. So we can expect many performance out of that compared to JavaScript. Also, the code that are um, emitted by compi compiler targeting WebAssembly are usually pretty well optimized. Like if you know LLVM is pretty well known for that. Where in JavaScript, we can only do basic optimization or at least minify our code. But we can do much more. Um, also, to be fair, when you call JavaScript from WebAssembly or WebAssembly from JavaScript, you can have technically some kind of slowdown because currently it's not like optimized yet, but engines are working forward to optimize that. So you can just call native code end-to-end -end to make it fast. Um, here's something cool that I stole from uh, Figma's blog which is that, um, by the way, Figma is a tool crea to create user interfaces in the browser. And basically, they used ISMJS in the past, and now they're using WebAssembly now. And they managed to cut the load time by three times, which is pretty impressive, I think. A, a really nice property of the binary format, I mean, of the WebAssembly, is the streamable thing, which is that you, could, you can compile instantiate your WebAssembly module while actually downloading it, which is not possible with JavaScript. So you can gain a lot of time with that. So now I would like to talk, um, wh what's WebAssembly from a user perspective? And it fits in one line of code. Like you could take your, if you use a compiler, you could just take your compiler and just put the target in it where here the target is just WebAssembly. It will compile your file and emit a binary. In this binary, you can just load it into your browser, and that's it. That sounds easy. So at the moment, a lot of languages are adding the support or already have the support for WebAssembly. I heard that a couple of them. You also have BrainFuck, because why not? 
A quick note about this report. Uh, you can't really see it here, but everything is green, uh, apart from IE 11, obviously. But we are working on uh, a WebAssembly interpreter written in JavaScript to be able to add this support where uh, you don't have WebAssembly support. So don't worry too much about that. We'll fix that. A common question people ask me is, is WebAssembly going to kill JavaScript? No. Because JavaScript is cool. You are all here for JavaScript, right? And <laughs> but languages that targeted JavaScript before will stop doing that and target WebAssembly instead because of the reason I said before. And in fact, you could actually mix WebAssembly, like whatever language, compared to WebAssembly, and your JavaScript project, you could just mix them together. And at some point, it will be completely transparent for you. Like you could use a WebAssembly module, like a JavaScript module, completely transparent for you. Another question is, uh, will we compile our JavaScript projects to WebAssembly? Um, no, please don't. Uh, as I said before, once again, JavaScript is too dynamic. Uh, it has no static typing, and it has a lot of checks at runtime, which means that it will end up being super slow. Um, but the, I have some good news. You have a couple of languages that are JavaScript syntax friendly, like AssemblyScript takes TypeScript and compiles down to JavaScript, to WebAssembly, sorry. Um, so if you are just used to TypeScript, you can just take it and compile it down to WebAssembly. And similarly, you have Walt, which is a new language, which is a new language, but it's really similar to JavaScript. And this particular example, it's maybe not the best benchmark I have, but this particular example is twice as fast as in JavaScript. So you need to keep in mind that um, WebAssembly is still an MVP. It has a couple of missing features, and I will go through them. Like, you have no garbage collection yet, um, which means that you cannot really use mm, languages that rely on garbage collection, because you basically don't have one. But you can ship your own, like Golang, the implementation in Golang, will be shipping its own garbage collector because it has specific optimization to it. But that will, be in, that will impact the size of the binary, but you can still do it. Um, another cool thing, I think, is threads. Like you have no native, you have no way to have threads in the browser. So here we are talking about native system threads uh, enabled in WebAssembly. So that's a pretty good news. One important thing is that you are not, so the browser doesn't expose its API into WebAssembly yet. For example, you don't have direct access to the DOM. Well, actually, I don't think it's a restriction because you can take any JavaScript function and import it into your WebAssembly module, which means that if you want to write into the console, you can just import a function which writes into the console. You put it into an object, and then you pass it to WebAssembly during the installation. And then you can just call it into WebAssembly. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the formats, the representation of WebAssembly, because you have two major representations. And some people are confused about that, so I will try to show them. So first, you have WASM. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. But it's basically the binary format. It's the one being meant to be distributed. Um, I can show you what it looks like. So it's basically just a sequence of bytes. There's nothing uh, really interesting there. What is more interesting is the WebAssembly uh, script or text format. It's the one meant to be readable for humans and the um, Debug debuggable as well. And it looks like this. It's basically you can disassemble a binary and get this lispy syntax thing, which is basically the representation of the binary in text. Uh, 
I will talk a bit about the tooling uh, we have now, which, are, which is uh, available in JavaScript. I mean, which you can use. And I will talk a bit of, uh, of a project I'm involved in too. It's called WebAssembly.js. We have some tools that enable passing of the two formats I just mentioned before. We have also a small interpreter that I also mentioned before. And we provide an AST and some tools to manipulate. We also provide a way to modify your binary on the fly, like do in-place modification in your binary. And this is heavily used by Webpack at the moment. Also, we have a couple of interesting thing, optimizations, like uh, dead code elimination in the future. And this is actually a piece of code I took from Webpack where uh, we are checking if the export of the module is used somewhere in your project. And if it's not used, we can, we can just remove it, right? This is dead code elimination. So I'm going to show you how to use it in Webpack, actually. So I have a small project here with a Webpack configuration. Oh, you can see it. Vim. OK, so here we have a Webpack configuration which has nothing fancy in it, just an entry point. Also have a, a Webpack watcher, which currently fails because I don't have the binary yet, I'm depending to. Um, and in my source folder, I have an index.js where I'm looking for the binary, I will compile in a second. I'm extracting an add function, and then I will take the result of the add function and just throwing it into the document. Also, uh, I did, no. Also, so also I have a small uh, C code that just take two integer and just sum them and just return the result. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and compile it. And you can already see the result um, of the C being compiled to WebAssembly and WebAssembly being built, bundled by Webpack. And so I'm just able to have my C code into the browser. And to, to prove that uh, it's not uh, just a demo, I'm going to update my code, recompile it, and there we go. I just bundle it on the fly, as you can see in the Webpack Watcher, and it's available in my web application directly. So the point of this is that you can take any C, C++, REST application, just compile it to WebAssembly, and just use it into your JavaScript application, which is pretty exciting, I think. So I have too many time. Um, my slides are available here. I, I still have 10 minutes if you want to take photos of this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>